عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه وذرياته اجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون بارك الله لنا ولكم في القران العظيم ونفعنا واياكم بالايات والذكر الحكيم انه تعالى جبار كريم ملك بر رؤوف رحيم هر شيء مسافر هر شيء مسافر هر شيء راهي كيا چاند تارے کیا مرغ و ماہی تو مرد میدان تو میر لشکر نوری حضوری تیرے سپاہی کچھ قدر کچھ قدر تو نہ کچھ قدر تو نے اپنی نہ جانی کچھ قدر تو نے اپنی نہ جانی یہ بے سوادی یہ کم نگاہی دنیا دوں کی کب تک غلامی دنیا دوں کی کب تک غلامی یا راہبی کا ریا بادشاہی Iqbal was a, a great poet, but at the same time, a great believer, a philosopher, a professor of economics, graduated from one of the world's leading university, Cambridge, and studied law at Inns, Lincoln's Inn in London. Practice of a politician as well, okay? But above all, he was truly a Marde Mormon true believer and you know when I reflect on 2016 we see that it was a great year for all of us in our own lives I hope we all progressed but it appears that the world seems to be more tense people seem to be at least perceiving themselves to be poorer more impoverished and the fear of the other looms very high on people's radars. As we saw with Brexit and the election of Trump and the election of the right wings in many parts of Europe, it's perhaps a signal of this. It's a signal that we are getting poorer and the people responsible for it are these immigrants, are these outsiders, these others. But more than that, at the base of it is really that human condition, that perennial human condition, that has always been part of humanity. I was reading this morning, the Quran saying, man is very miserly. Man is always grudging. Man is always aping for more and more. And you know, Iqbal here is awakening our sense of spirituality. He's, he wants to take us beyond, you know, what we have trapped ourselves into. And he says, har shay musafir har jeez rahi. Everything is a traveler. Everything is a wayfarer. Wayfarer. Everything is traveling. Everything is a wayfarer. It's moving. Whether it is the moon or the stars, whether it is the birds or the fish, everything is a traveler. But you, you, believer, tu marde maidam ka, tu marde maidam, tu mire lashkar. But you ought to be a warrior, he says. You ought to be the general. Nuri hazuri tere sapani, the angels, and human beings are all your soldiers. Kuch kadar tu ne apni na jaane. What a pity, he says. You haven't recognized me, you are. You don't know who you are. 
You don't understand your status and your position. Ye be sawadi, ye kam nagahi. Ye be sawadi, ye kam nagahi. What a poor taste you have. And what a poor vision you have. Eh? Be sawadi and be nagahi. You have very poor taste. You have a very poor sight, you know. You are not seeing beyond the trappings of the world. You are not seeing beyond the traps that the shaitan has laid for you. And then he says, Dunya dunki kapta gulami. Till when will you be the slave of this kamini dunya? Dunya itu kamini dunya. This worthless, this absolutely worthless world and material things. How long will you be the slave of these? You know, when we look at those who think they are impoverished, of course, the, those who think they are impoverished, the economists and the newscasters day in and day out tell us that, you know, these are the lower middle class, those who have come out of the working class, the young <coughs> professionals, they are the ones who are so, feel so impoverished. They are the ones who perceive to be, you know, losing out on the world. They are the ones who are, you know, uh, bringing about this revolution in, 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 in America, here, and everywhere. And you wonder, thank goodness, you know, around about 25,000 is the average they are getting. <coughs> 25,000 pounds average is what they are getting. And, and despite all that, they feel impoverished, they feel poor, they feel that they haven't got enough. This is what Iqbal is saying. You know, that kadal, kush kadal tune na apni jani, ye be sawadi, ye kam nigahi. What a pity. You haven't realized how great you are. You haven't got the right taste. You haven't got the right vision. You are blind. You are deaf. Sum mum buk mum. Urmiyan fahum la ya kiluna as the Quran says. Dunya dun ki kab ta gulami. How long will you be the servant of this world? Of these material things? You know, of these gadgets for which you ate? Ya rahabi kar ya badshahi. You know, he's talking to the Muslims, really. He says, well, either be the monk or be the king. And, you know, when you are a king, uh, you have one of the most, most scary life, okay? You are fearful every moment somebody's going to take away my throne. Somebody's going to take away this. Somebody's going to take away that. Isn't that true? He says, either be a monk or be a king. You know, I read this beautiful story last week. Uh, I was having my three days holidays and I, I was reading this beautiful story about a great saint who lived in the courts of the great Mount of Judy. Mount Judy, of course, you know, is mentioned in the Quran. It's in the northeast of Turkey, about 30 miles away from the Ira Iranian border. It's a very beautiful area. And the Quran talks about the Ark of Nu, the ship of Nu Islam, resting there. Okay. Now it's actually covered with, with, with the snow cap. It's about 5,000 meters high. And it's at the base of this, lived this wonderful saint, a teacher. He lived in his house and he would entertain anybody who came to learn. His disciples, his students. He had his, his khanda or his zaviya the spiritual retreat. So he had this traffic of people coming and going. One student stayed there for several years and eventually the teacher thought it's time for him to leave. But before he was to leave, he said, I want to test what have you learned from me over these years? What is it that you have learned in my spiritual retreat and my guidance and my teachings? What have you learned? And this is what he said. He said, oh, Blessed teacher. You know, this word blessed we often use. What does it mean, blessed? Well, there's a very beautiful translation I came across recently by a professor of Islamic studies. He said, blessed means a force. <coughs> a force. And I just thought that's really very, that is what it is. When you say, <laughs> blessed is the one who revealed the Quran. Blessed is the one who created the constellations in the stars. Tabarakalladhi so and so. It's very beautiful. Just think about it. 
a horse. Allah is that force that created everything. Allah is that power that created all this. So Tabarakullah he says, oh blessed teacher, what you have taught me is I have just learned, I have just learned five things from you. <laughs> of course that surprised the teacher. Oh my God, you've been with me for years. Is that all you've done? Five things you've learned from me? He was a bit surprised and he said to him, all right, well tell me what you've learned before you graduate from here. He said, firstly, people should love neither wealth nor high positions, nor fame. They should focus on doing the common good for humanity. You have taught me we should not be greedy or mean. Instead, we should be generous and charitable. I have noticed how people spend their day and night, in fact, their entire life, accumulating wealth, and they don't get to use it. And when they die, others inherit it. So when I have so what I have learned from you is whatever good we are given by the Almighty, we should not we should use it in the best way for the good of others. In this way we will have peace of mind and also pleasure of the Lord. That is what will give us true happiness here and in the hereafter. And that is a very I hope I was talking about the problems of our last year and the problems we see in a materialistic-minded people. And I'm not pointing fingers at anyone else. I'm pointing one finger at all of you and three fingers at myself. All right? We don't so... You know, it's very interesting. Muslims, when they have this kind of teaching, they think others are like that. I am not like that. What a pity, eh? That is not right. You know, there was a great teacher who always, when he read the Quran, and the Quran talked about the bad traits. He would cry and weep. And when someone asked why, he said, I am being described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am the miserly. I am the unfair. I am the unjust. I am the greedy person. Okay? You know, we need to really be looking at ourselves. And this is what the material world is not doing. The world out there, it thinks we are all too good. Okay? We are great. Whose statement is that? We want to be great. We are great. Hey, eh? <laughs> Who thinks like that? I hope you can see what kind of mentality has that idea. Okay? We are great. The second, the, the wise old man smiled and asked, what is the second thing that you have learned from me? And he said, ah, it is that, uh, that one should always be mindful of the Lord, be attentive and aware and fully awake to his responsibilities. Is that, I think, talking about taqwa here, okay? That we should have taqwa in ourselves. That self-awareness, self-consciousness, and being attentive to our responsibilities and our duties. Really. One should always remember that sustenance for our worldly needs is provided by the Almighty, the loving, the caring God. Therefore, we shouldn't be overly concerned. And that is the problem of the state, you know? Allah gives us so much, all of us. Right? Yet, the only thing that we have is, where is my food? Where is my next, you know, thousand coming from? And that, and that worries. And that worry, sadly, has taken over the lives of many people, to a large extent. And, and, and when you, you know, the Hitler's uh, Nazi Germany was a result of that. You know, when they saw that others were, you know, some people were getting more richer, okay? Greed, jealousy, that is what it was. Greed and jealousy. And this is what the chef and his student is saying. This is what I've learned from you. That we should be aware of not being greedy. And then he says, by now, the smile on the face of the sage was growing bigger and bigger. You know, he could, he could see the wisdom. You know, he didn't, you know, when he said, I learned five things. It didn't mean I learned the, you know, the farz of the wuzu and the conditions of salah and this. But far deeper philosophy, far deeper, rich spiritual teachings, you know, that are really Islamic. And he says, you know, the third thing that I have learned from you is that I have, uh, that I should never be jealous of others' wealth. Now that is very important. This is another very big <coughs> moral disease. In the Aristotle puts it, puts it as the fourth major moral vice, you know, jealousy. 
wanting others to be deprived of the good they have. Okay, he says, you know, why should I be jealous about others? Why should I be comparing myself with others? Why? Allah has made me equal to anyone else. Therefore, I should not compare myself. You know, this is one of the traits of very uh, anxious parents, you know, who are always comparing their child with the next, or with their cousin, or with their, uh, you know, with their nephew. Okay, how well is he? Eh? That kind of comparison, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, student is saying, no, you told me not to do that. And then he said, the fourth thing that I have learned from you is that, you know, the shaitan is the real enemy of humanity. Therefore, we should consider it as our enemy. Okay. And fifth thing that I have learned from you is that uh, the real helper and the guardian is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay. the Lord of the universe. Therefore, we should put our trust in him. We should become mutawakkileen. Okay. I don't want to say anything more other than, you know, what a beautiful set of five teachings this student has given us. And I think, you know, they really tackle the cause, the root cause of our problems, you know, our desire for more and more. Uh, the Quran calls it the asr, you know, this desire for more and more. Okay? This desire that I should, have sh I should have great fame and name, that I should be great and I should have great positions, okay? And that I should be very rich and I should leave behind me a legacy of millions, okay? Yet, all is to perish. All will perish. The only thing that will remain, as the Quran says, Everything will indeed perish, except the countenance, the greatness, the majesty, the grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our eyes to the reality and help us to see beyond you know, this world and to realize that we are, as Iqbal says, we are all wayfarers, we are all travelers on this great journey.